Yeah, we're not in the club, but we're right next to it. Me and my crew, we are country club adjacent. Country club adjacent. Country club adjacent, baby. Country club adjacent. Country club adjacent, baby. Welcome back to another very special episode of Country Club Adjacent. Beep, we are beep, at beep. what is the new home of golf, a Royal Tribuco Golf Club mm-hmm. here in Orange County with the newly formed legend himself, Michael Block. Michael, thank you. Thank you for coming on. Uh, I was a little, honestly, a little bit starstruck. I have met a lot of golfers, <laughs> but I don't know if it's like a new moisturizer since you started, like, you know, he's being tall. the public eye, but yeah, you're tall. Everyone know, it wants to know, like, he's a tall guy. <laughs> I was, like, I was rattled. I, like, I said thank yous, and I added an S yeah. for no reason. Very tan. <laughs> yeah, tan. You know, I know a lot of golfers are tan, but I was like, whoa, he's much tanner than you I see, He's more handsome and taller yep. in person in case. You were probably wondering, so, and we're here to tell you. You guys need a loan or something? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> the guy that does need I one isn't that. here right now, yeah, so. I appreciate can that. Can you hook us up with Corbridge Financial? I can. Corbridge, Charles Schwab, whatever you guys need, I got you. Oh, you got yeah. Schwab, you got Chuck? Yes, I do. Yeah, Chuck we need. We're market? looking for a Corbridge financial connection because that's like that's our demographic. Is it just so. like Frank at Corbridge dot com? Y- yeah, we can. We, I, I'll I'll send it to you, brother. I okay. got I, I got think you that's set a good up. fit for us. We're make your money work make mm-hmm. work for you. Yeah, <laughs> I Corbridge, love that. Dude. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks so much for uh, taking the time today, and thanks for having us at your uh, beautiful uh, property here. This is spectacular. Um, so what are your what are your goals this year, dude? Let's get right into it. What are your goals for the 2024 PGA season? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be tough to be 23, to be honest, ever again in my life. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's no way, actually, I'm going to. Um, top 15 in a, in a major and then traveling around the world, basically, and meeting all the people I have. Uh there's no way I beat it. Uh, I'm just gonna go out and try to uh, not embarrass myself. Go out and have a good time is my you know first thing. Uh, you know I've got a couple tour events here early coming up. Right, I've got the Farmers Insurance at Tory, and I've got the American Express at PJ West. So I've got those right in January. So we're gonna see how that kind of directs me. Right. So if I go play well in one of those. Mm-hmm. You know that could light up uh, the twenty-four. Uh, I love that. See, now, that's what we want. We want act. You're like, hey, I'm just happy to be here. And then twenty-four gets lit up. You're like, all right, well, right, I guess well, we'll we'll keep going. I want to make some footprints. Shoot, we, we'll just keep going. This is, this is such a cool sport because no other sports can somebody like. Does a teaching pro play like at the at the big boys level at the highest level like mm-hmm. that? That'd be cool in other sports, wouldn't it? Like if somebody who's just like a basketball coach could play in one game against the Lakers. I'm telling you, it's it's literally like you're at a Lakers game and you know they pull somebody out of the crowd and they're like, yeah, you got to make this free throw to win the game, you know? And <laughs> right, and yeah. it's like that doesn't happen, you know. And that's a really cool part about it here uh, in the game of golf is you, as a PGA member, you got this opportunity to get into the PGA Championship if you play well enough in our qualifier, which you know, which I was lucky enough to do. And uh, and then I just had a week, you know, of my life at uh, Oak Hill, um, just you know. In every in every aspect, and uh, just got very very lucky coming down the stretch, making that hole in one, and getting that up and down on on 18. Which, you know, that up and down on 18. If I if I knew that I had to get that up and down to finish 15th, I probably wouldn't have gotten an up and down. I had no idea. I was just, uh-huh. I've, right? never, I've never looked at a leaderboard and have it help in my life, dude. You know, it's, <laughs> that shot could yeah. have been crazier than the hole in one. I mean, that seemed like such a tough up that and down. That was impossible. <laughs> yeah, the 18 was actually more skill. That set, uh, 15 was pure luck. You know, I mean, the ball goes in the hole in the fly. That's just yeah. pure luck. Uh, <laughs> 18 was more skill, but still, I got lucky there, right? It just barely landed in the rough, trickled out, uh, which I wasn't even trying to do. I was trying to land it like in the fringe or just barely on the green. And when I saw the replay, because I couldn't see it where it landed from where I was, because there was a bunker right over it, and uh, man, it, it landed in the rough and trickles, dude. And that rough is deep, and so I was so lucky it didn't stick in there. And you're qualified to play in it next year, correct? Yeah, Valhalla, Louisville, Kentucky. Can't Ooh. wait for that one. Uh, dude, My, I think my high school's having like a high school reunion now. Over there. I'm from St. Louis, and they're going to cruise over there. Oh, yeah. Oh. My old, uh, yeah, so we're going to have a little party over there. They're like, Blocky, can you make it out one of those nights? I'm like, dude, just make it in, early in the week, and I'll come out <laughs> hanging. Tuesday night, <laughs> please. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be trying to yeah. do it tears and wrong hungover. <laughs> I mean, I feel like you give hope for the everyday golfer. That's what makes you, like, so Special. relatable. Mm-hmm. And even though you're so much better than anybody who just, like, goes out on the weekend and plays, there's still that just, like, oh, man, well, if this guy could, like, Absolutely. finish this high in a major, you know? Oh, what hands a, down. I just, yeah. like, literally just yesterday, I had uh, given away a, a, a group for a charity event, right? So to come play nine holes with me here. And... uh 
couple of the guys, like on one hole, I mean, like they're literally a four handicap and a seven handicap. Hole 18, huh? Two of them hit it by me on, on a drive. Oh, really? Yeah, and I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> there you go, boys. And uh, they're just like, wow, we just outdrove you. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I, I mean, I, I've given lessons for a long time where guys hit their seven irons higher and further and better than I hit my seven iron. Um, it's just all about, you know, putting the whole game together. Yeah. Learning how to score is kind of like this, you know, um, the artistic part of uh, playing golf. And, you know, that's one thing you have to do if you're not a bomber. You know, you have yeah. to be a little more artistic with your things. You've got to be smarter off the yeah. tee. Just do stuff like that. And We're all going to have to learn that when they roll the balls back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah what's, your, what's your thoughts on that? I was, I was just getting ready to say. <laughs> I'll be retired in 2020. <laughs> 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 They're rolling the balls back for the pros and everyday mm -hmm. guys like yeah. us. I say us, and you're not in the same category as us, but... What like what is that going to do for golf? Is that good or bad? I'm bummed out. You know, I never like it going backwards. Uh, no. That's too bad. Um, it'd be like giving little league kids, you know, a, a wooden bat. You know, and it's yep. like, really, is that fun? Um, Remember when the NFL took the celebrations out of oh, the end zone? Like, what were they yeah. thinking? Yeah, it right. seems like bummed. a similar vibe. Yeah, I'm right. bummed on it, but it, you know, I, they must have some serious reasons for it. But I mean. Why don't we just limit it now? Just quit, quit making them faster. You know, we're at a, we're at the, I think, peak level right now with how thin a driver face can be. We're at the peak where uh, how far a ball, golf ball can go. Let's just not allow them to go any further than that than they are now, and just and end it. But I guess their uh, RNA and USG have decided not to. It just seems like it, it just seems like the governing bodies of uh, of golf literally are are, are so disconnected. It's a king and right? a monarchy. Yeah. Speaking on behalf of all the people, and the people don't want this. The people have no say in this. Yes. Ninety nine percent of the golf world is not on board with this. How can we can we overthrow the monarchy? Yeah. Here? Can we can, can we do anything to stand up against them? And be like, no, we're not going to do this. Can you imagine being all the golf ball manufacturers out there? Ugh. That how much money this, this is going to cost them? It, well, in the, in the, it's well, gonna, it's people are going to go out of business. Like the yeah. middle tier to lower tier golf ball companies, there's no way they can just order this much new inventory. You're yeah. toast if you're one of those balls. And then, and then uh, what has to fall suit is the golf clubs. You can't have the golf balls and then keep pumping out drivers that go longer every year. So club manufacturing and golf balls, the whole golf industry is like... Dude, I want to see if anybody from the USGA is invested into Titleist. Cause this could be big pharma Titleist Ooh. trying to take back over the industry. Wow. The competitors were getting a little too close. Interesting. <laughs> they have some investors in the USGA. Ooh. And they're like, well, we have the financial backing to just make new golf balls. Ooh. Just wow. A, then a couple hundred million new golf balls. But a, like, you look at like... like uh, like a clear golf ball or like an like an encore. Uh, you yeah, you, encore you, you don't stand a chance. <laughs> no <laughs> shot. Sadly, yeah. but also not sadly because yeah. we only. That's you know. what I think it is, dude. I think this is this is Illuminati golf ball. It is. Yeah, it's yeah. a bunch of Nancy Pelosi's running the uh, Thank you. The, the golf industry. <laughs> like, what and are we you're doing? about to make hundreds of millions of dollars. <laughs> Somebody's gonna get well. Somebody at the USGA <laughs> is going to make a lot of money. The RNA guys, you know, the RNA guy that was in the talks. Somebody's invested in Apparently, his teeth are going in 14 di different directions. I cannot take governing. Advice from you on golf balls when you can't get your teeth together. What does that mean? The guy from the RNA, the head guy. No, no, no. What is the teeth metaphor? His teeth are just going in 14 different directions. Oh. I can't have that guy oh, tell you're me. Like, <laughs> ri like you're making fun of him physically. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was like a British, like. No. Okay. Maybe, maybe Got he's it. doing That's this also. in order to be able to afford veneers. Maybe <laughs> See? this is all he's just a ploy this. to get those teeth that you can't Disgusting. look at without, you know. Hmm. Yeah, it's well, too it could be something there. Yeah. But so you said you're going to be retired. So you're like, how, how old are you? Uh, I'm 40, uh, 47. 47. Oh, that's yeah. not yeah. three years. That's that's 40. senior tour. Yeah, senior tour is coming. Uh, yeah, senior tour is coming up high. Are, yeah. we, are you stoked? Are we eyeing that? Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I'd be lying to you if I wasn't going to say I'm going to go to Q school. I'll, I'll definitely do that. I'm already in the senior PGA. The year I turned 50 because of an exemption back in the day. Nice. So uh, I already have some opportunities there. Hopefully, get in uh, the Hogue here and the Gallery, which are SoCal uh, events. So yeah, I mean, literally, you can qualify for the senior. I, I believe at age 49 and the second you turn 50 you're on That's so cool. it's hard to get on to they only take five a year out of a q school for oh, senior tour. wow yeah okay. on the champions yeah well, they the do, champions. Do, they do wow. exemptions as well senior yeah tour? you can yeah you get exemptions into the events i mean if john daly could still be qualified he has it like well yeah i mean i'm gonna try to get exemptions obviously and you go play well it, it, you know it takes care of itself and, yeah and that's what i'll do that's what i need to do and if you can't then you don't deserve to be there anyway <laughs> i love it now now let's let's get into the more um interesting things that are happening right now with you know the world golf ranking points 
and you know the live tour you know you, the, our, our guy john rom is is going over thick boy well what what are your thoughts on you know the possibly even playing on live and what you see in terms of the future of competitive golf yeah, it was insane. I was playing the RBC Canadian Open uh, earlier this year. I believe it was like mid uh, beginning of June, and I was out doing a, a charity thing on the Tuesday, and I was with the, about seven other PGA Tour players. A couple guys are even on the board. Mm -hmm. We're out there playing, and we all have three amateurs in our groups. And the guys that are even on the board, some of the guys that they found out from their amateur partners that are looking on their phones that uh, it was gonna that you know, they were gonna get together and. They were absolutely pissed. Um, yeah, yeah, and I don't blame them for it either. Uh, you know, I, it is what it is. There's, there's always been different tours. Um, it's just too bad that you know, it just seemed like at the beginning of this whole thing, Live and PGA Tour were so against each other. Yes, and, and, and it's such a big fight. Yeah, it wasn't good. And uh, I mean, there's a European tour. There's always been all these different tours, and it's just a different tour, different dynamic, different things that they're doing. You know. My biggest thing, as long as it's it's it better for the game, and I just think the game was kind of getting hurt a little bit here over the last year and a half because of it. Um, and I'm not blaming Liv. I'm not blaming PGA Tour. It's just the cohesiveness wasn't there, and now at least they're kind of going to work together because they understand that that's going to be better for both. It's going to yeah, be better yeah. for everybody. And uh, I look forward to seeing. Hopefully, they hammer it out and they get it all figured out. Yeah. But like with John Ram going right now, it's like why wouldn't you? Yeah, you have to now. You're forcing their hand at this point. You get that cash. It's like, come on. Yeah. Well, for a lot of people that don't know this, this isn't exactly new. In 1968, uh, the PJ of America was running pro golf, and then players weren't happy with the status quo and said, "We want to start our own tour because this 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 isn't working for us and doesn't benefit us." So they went off and started the PGA Tour. Right. So th is, is what's different and what's similar to this happening before? Yeah, honestly, I mean, I wasn't part of that one, but I'm, I'm a PGA member <laughs> and I play on the PGA Tour. So, you know, obviously they're separate at this point. Back in the day is what happened was most of the pros were actually like me. They ran a golf course mm -hmm. and they played on the tour. So they did both. And so at one point they were understanding, you know, these guys that were probably the upper echelon of of that tour at that point said, I'm making more money out here doing this. I don't need to go back to a club and work mm -hmm. hourly and do stuff like that. I can just stay out here. But now I need to create my own tour because now I don't. I can't be part of both. So I'm guessing that's what created the PGA Tour. Got it. Compared to the PGA of America, which is just you know we are running clubs and and teaching golf. PGA Tour is playing, and that's the biggest you know change between the two. You get a bunch of Michael Blocks that are like, we're done teaching. We're <laughs> going to start our own Michael Block tour, <laughs> and then you have the PGA Tour. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you know, I think that's what happened. You know, I mean, obviously they're a lot better than I, I am, but they, these are the guys winning events, you know? They're yeah. winning events, and they're going, what am I doing? I, You know, I mean, if I want a PJ Tour event, do you think I'm really going to come back here and, and still be running the club? I, no. No. <laughs> so uh, so I can see I can see how it happened. Yeah, that Got makes it. sense. And and how do you feel as though, especially in this, in this uh, day and age, with all the social media and everything going around it, how do you feel that um, Jay Monahan handled the situation in terms of doing a complete 180 from his initial position? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> dude, that was that was gnarly. Yeah, I was there. I was there with. I I remember I was having lunch on the patio at the club Oakdale in Toronto. Yeah, and I'm watching him. He's out on the patio, and then they had that meeting that night. And I remember some <laughs> some guy they had a players only meeting, and one of these guys, I think it was an amateur that had like qualified for the event or had an exemption. <laughs> well, a players meeting, and he like sneaks into it and he videos it. I don't know what happened. Craziness, but yeah, what Monahan did. I'm not part of the PGA Tour board or anything like that, so uh, but it didn't seem right. Right, it really didn't. I I know if I was a player, and you know, you didn't hear any leaks really from inside. You heard some rumblings and whatnot, but I know if I was a player, I would have been absolutely just uh, like, "What are you doing? Did you, are, have you been just been lying to us this whole time? Like, yeah, what, what the what well, the heck Jay was Monty that? invest into Titleist, so that's, <laughs> yeah, that's a big part of it. He's gonna, he's, he's well, fine. You know, just the players having say. Yes. It's just like it's, it's a, it's basically a great example or precedent for the future. It's like, this is not how things should work. The players should be having more of a say. So hopefully in the future, this will give the players more power, and say, and their tour that they're making all the money for everyone for. Yep. Yeah, it just blew my mind, and so I was curious about your thoughts because you know you you obviously are are in in the tour. You're 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 like a, a newly established star 
essentially. <laughs> and I was curious about your thoughts on that because it, it blew my mind. I got very mad on the player's behalf. I was mad because of the position from the beginning because I think if there was just like, if everyone would have just been chill, the two, the two, it could have ex- coexisted and it would have been much cleaner. Yeah, it, it embarrassed the players. I mean, it, it really embarrassed did. the shit out of the yeah, players. Yeah. Now, you've played at this elite level. You've had an incredible year. I'm curious, you know, you have, if somebody's played in 40 majors, it's in 40 high level elite events, PJ Tour events, like it's easier for them. They know they've been there, and, and you're coming out like with a less experience playing in majors in these elite level tournaments, yet you were able mentally at the PGA to hang with those guys with less experience. How were you able to handle that pressure not having that experience? Like, what was going through your mind? Like, oh man, I'm like out of my league here, but I can also, I'm not, I can hang in there was it like crazy <laughs> delusional confidence or was it like you know like where did you come up with that Dude, day? you know you get to the uh fu age yeah. <laughs> i think i've gotten there um where i don't care as much about what people think or say or do nice. um <clears throat> and for me that's what i used to care so much when i'd go to these two events my wife would literally make fun of me because i'd talk differently i'd walk differently like literally that's how much I tried to <coughs> become a robot and be a PJ Tour player, like Alpha what I saw player. on TV. <laughs> oh, oh, honey, don't touch. <coughs> I'll never forget, because I have a bad wrist, and we were in Louisville, my first PGA Championship in 2014. We're walking down the street, and she kind of grabbed my wrist just a little, like grabbed my hand just to, you know, hold, hold my hand. I was like, oh, no, hold my right, hold my right hand. I'm like going, dude, I'm like, in my own head, I'm going, dude, are you kidding me, bro? <laughs> that guy, guy would have folded. Dude, in the and he did, and he yeah, shot 74, 75, I think, that year. Okay, Missed yeah. the cut. That guy, yeah, that MC. Way that guy hangs. Yeah, so, I mean, the, like I said, I mean, I'm being honest, like, you know, I'm 47 now, getting to 50. I mean, you do, you get to a certain age, and I think it happens kind of when you get into your 40s where you kind of just be like, hey, you know, if people like me, they like me. I like being around people that, that I have fun with. Uh, I'm not trying to be somebody I'm not. And that's now when I go out there, you know, <laughs> I'm not, I, it's okay. You know, it's okay having gray hair and it's okay having a little tummy. You know, it's okay uh, just being that guy. And it's okay and it, not that far. Um, yeah, it's okay to have a tummy. Yeah, yeah you know, it's all totally good. good. <laughs> Um, yeah, dude, that, that makes sense. I mean, for us, like we all started as stand up comedians and, uh, like when we got into more of the golf space, the pressure of like going out every night and doing stand up just completely dissipated. And then when like, I know Griff goes out and does stand up now, he doesn't feel any pressure and it's just like, this is a bonus. Right. Yeah. I did, so, if I, if I bomb, if I had the worst set of my life, it doesn't matter. Cause it's like, cool. This isn't my, you know, this isn't yeah. my, my, I can go shoot 85 tomorrow 100%. and make money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I like that. I can't even imagine being a stand up comedian. dude. That's just, I love stand up comedians and yeah, no, that's, I can't fathom doing that, but yeah, good that's on where you. our fourth is right now. Mark, the guy with the long hair, he opens up for this guy, Burt Kreischer. Oh, yeah. Um, and so like tomorrow I'm going to be in New York and I'm going to go see him open up for an 18,000 person arena. Sick. Uh, so that's cool. like, it's, you know, it's kind of crazy that like he does that and then, you know, he'll come just like be absolute idiots with us <laughs> the next day. He'll do acid on the golf course and <laughs> shoot 90 Yeah, and be proud of it. Um, any <laughs> performance enhancing drugs uh, off the PGA Ooh, tour? You, uh, PEDs. Like, if you like need to relax broken? on the golf course, anything going on there? No, the only thing I've got is uh, a leave. I definitely <laughs> okay. need a leave. Yeah, yeah. I'm old. <laughs> Dude, I'll tell you what. If I sit down, it takes me a little bit of time to get up now and stuff like that. Or if I warm up, i got to warm up and go straight to the, the first hole because, you know, it's uh, – it's crazy how you just get, man, you get old and just get slow and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Uh, Have you heard any mumblings of, like, in in the mushroom space uh, uh, with, with golf? Because, like, uh, I we had that, there was that Golf Digest article recently that about, like, PGA Tour players potentially taking mushrooms mm-hmm. beforehand or cool. something along those lines. Like, uh, have you, like, do you know if, if like. Never dabbled in it, but I've yeah. heard about it. My, you know, I know, I know the word microdosing and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Uh and I know that there's all different types and et cetera, et cetera, that you know, <laughs> grows your hair and makes you just better complexion and, mm-hmm. uh, you right, know, makes yeah. you more calm or something like that. I know there's a lot of different variables or items you can get through it, but I have not heard anything on tour. I mean, I'm sure there's things going on out there that I'm, it, you'd be naive not to, um, but uh, not that I know of personally. Yeah. Well, we can only hope. <laughs> I, I would think uh, when you get on the senior tour, though, you could you could take PEDs. Yeah, because you should because uh, you could take TRT. <laughs> you, in, uh, you take TRT as long as your test range is in a certain range. 
So if you hit your 50, your test is way lower than 21, but you could mm. take TRT to get it back up to the high range. What are you thinking? You I'll look into it. Yeah. You, <laughs> you know what I mean? Get some so HGH. I'll look into it, whatever. I if mean, I can just... I mean, yeah, that's 20 yards. <laughs> that's the thing, though. Like, it's almost weird to, like, talk about this stuff openly because, like, as a fan of golf, I want to see these golfers, like, look like Tiger. Yeah. And, we all do. And hit the ball as far as you can and, yeah. like, you know, like, celebrate and do, like, all these fun things that are entertaining to watch. Yep. And the more you – it becomes part of, like, the vernacular and, and people are talking about on social media or whatever, then, like, you know, you're going to see – usga mike or whatever pull back and you know that's when you can't do it anymore yeah so i feel like we're in this gray area right now for a lot of things and uh you know um uh, i mean dude look look at tiger's body right yeah. now okay. yeah. let he's, this man play throughout any cost it doesn't uh, matter what he's doing we all know what he's doing yeah he's, he's going See, on. there's something doesn't matter. there's some stuff but it's okay because I, I think again it might be even legal too because you're 48 years old you've been through 47. 38 47, 47. 47 griff Come on. i'm aging me in here brother don't <laughs> don't do that to our guests no tiger Oh, oh, yeah, Tiger, Tiger is okay. yeah. yeah, He's been through 100 million surgeries. Like, that guy's been through a lot. Like, and he's competing against 21-year-olds that smoke the golf ball mm -hmm. 330 in the air. Yeah. Like, I think it's fair for a guy like that to be able to take a little TRT. He, he can have a little test. It's, it's not like other sports where you retire when you're in your late 30s. You're 48 yeah. competing with 21-year-olds. Right. You should be able to do something. You're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, game. you're literally speaking my language right now. <laughs> I think it's fair game, dude. Uh, there's a, there, you know, there's almost a 30 year gap there. Like, you got to pick up a little bit, a little bit of slack. That's what I'm saying, dude. Now, now outside of golf and you know doing what you're doing here, um, what uh, what's what's the day in the life of Mr. Block? <laughs> I, you know, I sound like such a golf dork, but I mean, it is literally about golf. I mean. <laughs> My family is addicted to golf. My wife, my two kids, is oh, all we nice. do is golf. And then with my dog, I just bring him. My, my, my favorite thing to do is actually not even have my golf clubs. I, I like to bring my dog here Aww. and run around this lake. It's my favorite thing in the world. I got a black lab. So Love that. to put my lab in the back of my truck, not in the backpack, but in the back seat, <laughs> of course. put the windows down and, and cruise down here, get in the golf cart. And he just loves the golf. He knows exactly what to do. He gets in the golf cart. We cruise around that lake. And, uh, that's my happy, happy time. Yeah. And then to go play golf with my uh, my two boys, and you know, I play golf with my wife just because I have to. But uh, <laughs> but I, I do that on Sunday afternoons. You, do you let her win? <laughs> Hell no. But, uh, <laughs> Damn right. Any, I, I don't think I could. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> Any like big life changes th this year as far as just like did you get one big purchase uh, or is like something you splurged on? Same house, same truck. Same everything. Um, <laughs> I'm is wait, retirement I'm, looking I'm, better. Yeah, retirement's <laughs> going to probably become a little earlier, which is nice. <laughs> um, but at the same time, I mean, we're waiting to cut this pretty fat check here coming up in April um, and then oh, figure yeah. out things from there. Oh, uh, yeah, because taxes. What? Dude, the taxes here are going to be gnarly. Tax yeah, man, yeah, it's going to be bad. Yeah, so we're not spending a penny, just letting it sit there and, and see what happens after the taxes because that check's going to be a, a hard one to cut. Yeah, you need a good guy. Yeah, you, you got to move to Puerto Rico. <laughs> I do. You got to get some yeah, more dude. expenses, dude. I would yeah. start buying more grass for the course. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just start dude, buying stuff. I mean, dude, you can write off everything. Yeah. You no, know? that's a good part about it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been a great year. and But, no, I'm not changing. I'm not going to change my house. I love where I live. and Maybe a vacation oh, yeah, it's home. Good. I'm good. Yeah, maybe it's maybe a second house in the desert would be there dope. You oh, and the, you dude, go. get you out of California. Up. You need I know. Trust me. Trust me. <laughs> trust me. But I can't go live somebody somewhere for six months because I need to be here at the club. So. I mean, you could. Yeah. You could. Oh, dude, yeah. You could. Yeah. 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 Maybe rent that out. You See? should pull the, like the Tommy Armor route where you just become like a spokesperson for the Discovery properties, Ooh. and then just like live at every Discovery property. Take the family. Have you thought about that? Not a bad life. I'd be lying if I haven't talked to Discovery <laughs> Properties. <laughs> yeah, dude, get out. What's his name? Michael. Michael, the guy who owns Discovery. Uh, yeah, Mr. Melbourne. Yeah, I got Melbourne on the phone. Let's work some out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go to yep. El Dorado. Great guy. Yeah. Let uh, Jake broker it. Yeah. He's yep. very good. Yeah. Yeah. 2%. Be the finer Take two percent. So uh, you grew up uh, in St. Louis? I did. And how did you end up out here? Golfing girls. Um <laughs> Yeah, it's uh plain and simply I, I was out here at the golf academy in San Diego, fell in love with it. Drove all the way back by myself in my oh, Honda Accord. Oh, you also got a fake degree. Like yeah, fake. yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> I went to the professional golfer's career yeah, college. exactly. Yeah, you know so what it is. You're our rival. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you go back. I drive all the way back to St. Louis. I do a phone interview with a gentleman at the Lakes Country Club out in Palm Desert to get a job as an assistant pro. And 
I get the job, and literally three days later, I drive 24 more hours back out here, and I've been out here since uh, 98. Nice. Six years at the Lakes Country Club, and I've been here for uh, 19 years at, at Royal. That's awesome. Did you get a house around that time? <laughs> God, I wish I would have had a house at that time. <laughs> oh. No, no. 2014 was the finally of the year. I won the national championship for club professionals, which gave me a, a nice check, and that allowed me to finally put a down payment on a house literally two miles up the street here. Oh, I love Orange County. Every time I come down here, it's, it's nice. always just like, wow, this is they have this it is together, nice. Dude. They have it together. Yeah. Yeah, it's chill. Yeah. It's the brother that went to med school, and L.A. is the brother that tried to became, become a musician, and it just didn't yep. quite work out for him, <laughs> and he needs to get his shit together. Yeah, he went to rehab four times. Yeah, but this is the brother that went to med school and mm -hmm. invested and, like, is raising a wonderful family out here. Yep. It's, it's great in Orange County. The food's amazing. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, Orange Dude, County. We got some good Asian me? food. I don't know. I just figure like people just go to like Buffalo Wild Wings every night here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's all the chain on. restaurants. There, there is that going on. They yeah, have that. It, it is the suburbs. They have that. It is the suburbs. But they've got some fire restaurants. Do they not? Like, oh yeah, especially down near the beach, Laguna. Dude, yeah. there's Newport. big yeah. money Laguna here. They have great spots. Big money here. Hmm. Oh, Costa Mesa, that yeah. shopping center pulls in like a couple billion a year. Yeah, that, there's that. There's it's my insane. favorite mall is down here, dude. It's insanity. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't this know if you got a favorite place. mall, but it's down what here. Uh, the Fashion Square or the, the, fashion, the fashion Island. Fashion, fashion Island. Island. There yeah, it is. That's cool. So great. We're playing a match today. Yes. It's gonna be you and your son Dylan. Yes. Mm -hmm. Versus the three of us. He bombs it. Yes, he does. Yeah. Was so he getting you the three sixties, three seventies sometimes. Easily. We're, oh, easily. Really. Easily. Stats. You got some competition. Got some competition. He just was in the World Long Drive Championship. As, What's as his number? He played in as well. He got he got into it four seventeen once. What? He went what? up against Berkshire. Where was it? He went Where was it? In Atlanta oh. about oh. three Ooh, weeks that's ago. That's not even elevation. Yeah, that was that's in wind. Atlanta. That's and it was wind. raining, yeah. and he went against Berkshire, who's our bro. Literally up against him, four of them, and uh, and this Dylan's never done this in his life, but he hit a, Dylan hit four hundred four, and Berkey hit a four fourteen. Wow. Uh, that's yeah, crazy. Cool. Ten yards within the goat. That's, yeah, that's yeah. top tier. Okay, yeah. Yeah. okay so because we're doing a scramble today, you have your Rory length, so you should have any <laughs> excuses, <laughs> huh? Uh -huh. You know what I have, though. <laughs> yeah, but Dylan you have Rory's length. <laughs> as as what here's what happens to Dylan, though. So when Dylan, he does, he's done this a lot in these YouTube things where he goes, and he just everyone's talking about his length. And that's so getting in his head about how far it is because then oh, he'll, 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 he'll swing out of his ass and yeah. hook it hook it into shit. So yeah, um, well, yeah. If we'll he could just he can out drive stuff. If, if he's with dad and he's just cruising because he's no he knows he's hundred yards by me just naturally he just he smooths it out there and he's dead straight. Oh. But yeah, when he tries to absolutely get after it, then he gets all over the place and that's when he gets in trouble. But if he keeps it in play, we can go deep. Uh -oh. Are we talking about like a three hundred and ten yard fairway finder? Oh. Longer, <laughs> like three thirty, yeah, like three thirty. It's stupid. Yeah, it's cool. I, I, I hope you guys see it. I, I think you'll be uh, somewhat impressed by it. And Dad will just be back there. You know, I'll bunt it in play and then let him get after it. Mm -hmm. Has uh, we're in trouble. Has he taught you his fun trick shot? He tried. Um, yeah, it's crazy actually what he does. I, I mean, know. I've seen the clips. It's insane. And then now he's trying to do it, flip it over his head. I mean, he's, yeah, it's it's crazy what he does back there. And I mean, there's no AI or anything like that. Like when he was. Uh, spinning on there and he throws in the cup and stuff like that that's just all legit and yeah he he spends his days on the back of the range they're uh practicing trying to get better but then also you know a lot i think too much time on the uh on the <laughs> on the talk and all those other things yeah get off the tick tock and get on the tour <laughs> exactly how old is dylan now he just turned 18 18 yeah. so is he is he signed to go to college no and play no or? he didn't he wants nothing to do with college he wants everything really? to do with Smart. golf he's all golf 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 um i like that and uh you know what we didn't force him you yeah, know, save I mean, that money, Pops. Yeah, it's, it's good. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> like, thank God. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fifty thousand dollars of retirement right there. Yeah, I mean, I feel like he's perfect to like sign with Good Good, you know, and play with those guys. Yeah, he's. You know what? He's he'd be in bad bad if there was a if there was such a thing because he's kind of a. <laughs> He's he loves talking a lot of shit and he's oh, he and, he, and he doesn't give a <laughs> yeah. shit about anything or anything what Sorry, they think. Mart. Sorry, Mart. Yeah, so he uh, he is that he is a different person. He's much different than I am. I'll tell you. My wife's an Argentinian Italian fireball, and that's Ooh. more of what he is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. His personality, and you might have seen it in his TikToks, but he uh, I mean that's a little bit of a show, obviously, when he's like, you know, why do you suck and all this stuff. But um, yeah, he's he's a different different animal. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm stoked to uh, stoked to play with it. I'm too. I'm excited to see him drive it past me because yeah. that never happens. So, what do you think uh, if you were to lay a bet for you guys versus us? What do you think the odds would be? 
He needs to know how good we are or how good we're not. I've never played with you guys, so I don't know. Yeah, but um, so. I know you played some college golf. I, we were talking about that right, earlier. Right <laughs> any other, any yeah, other college, college golf, your boys? No, uh, yeah, I tried to walk on to Florida State. And you're deep, but it sounds like. But Brooks yeah. Kefko took his but Brooke, I was there the he same year as Brooks was there and his brother, so I didn't, I didn't make the team. Chase, um, what's your club at speed? Uh, right, club at speed's like 125, 126. Wow. So it's, oh, you're fast. It's speed. No, that's it's great. There. That's great. Yeah. Um, okay, and? Um... <laughs> Club at speed or no, 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 no. How, how's your, which, okay, what's your index? What's your handicap? About a four. Okay, so we got a lot of club at speed off the tee. Good player here and a four, obviously pretty good. You can make those putts when, you know, they miss them. Um, I'm guessing this is about a plus 250. You're saying oh. you're plus 250. Mm -hmm. Huh. Oh. Interesting. There's one factor I think you left out there, what's and that? uh, that's... That's us being able to talk as much shit possible to the block family Love today. It. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Oh, we're not getting in his oh, head. There, there's, there's so much shit talked in this in my normal group. It's ridiculous. Yeah, so we're, it's all about it. Yeah, no way listen. we're getting in his head. We can have a good I time disagree. for sure. If there's any man that knows right how to there. handle pressure, it's this guy. Yeah. But we can get in Dylan's head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's young. He still cares what people think. You know, mm. he doesn't give a shit. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, it'll, be fun. it'll be fun. I, I hope he hits in the fairway. If he hits in the fairway, we'll be a good team. Okay. Uh, if he's if he's a little off, then it, it, it's a little scary. What's Dylan's handicap? Is he a plus? Yeah, he's like a plus six or something like that. Oh, okay. A plus Casual. six? Yeah. And oh, what's your handicap? He might have been like a plus one. But he plays, I mean, at Arroyo 90% of the time. So he plays. He knows this course like the back of his hand. And we're yeah. also members at Mission Vale Country Club down the street, which is much, much more difficult. So he doesn't obviously score like he does So we're there. playing against a plus six. And what's your handicap? At least a plus, plus six. Four five somewhere oh, wow. in there. No. So your Dude. son beats you. A oh lot. yeah, yeah. Really? He just took a thousand off me the other day. He's, really? been, he's probably beaten me three out of the last five times. Wow. So you're saying you you say you're a plus four, but you got top fifteen in a major. Like I don't think any plus four could do that. No, nah, it's my, you it's, have a plus eight hey, hey, and you. Hey, hey, I play in games, all right? So. <laughs> 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 okay, so that being said, what is hypothetically the most that you would like to have won on a golf course playing in a in a money game? How much have I won? Yes. Mm. Oh, he's smiling. I'm very he's curious I, because I know that <laughs> I know that the pros are out there playing for like big money in their in their in their in their money matches, and I'm just I'm curious. Yeah, but I'm a club pro still, so yeah, yeah. And I mean, and this is before in this last year, but honestly. I've taken off a tour player 5,000. That's Ooh. nice. Name names. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> tell us, okay, so okay, so you can't tell us that, but do you have any uh, any any interesting insight, any weird stuff that you know about on tour that you can't name names about? Oh, I see a smile. <laughs> uh, if there's any weird gossip or any like weird stuff that you know or or something that you've heard that. You know, obviously, we're not asking to name names, even though Jake will ask you to name names. Do you have any uh, any like scoop? Like in what? In like what? An area? I'm trying to think. Um, Griff, what's the what's what's the story Lucas without Glover? without naming names? Just yeah. Lucas Glover's wife beat him. Oh man, dude, <laughs> that was when I but saw that, bro. Information. Oh my god, it's public information. I felt so bad for that guy, <laughs> dude. I'd be sweating that much too. Yeah, <laughs> man, and he seems like such a good cat too. And you know, it's uh, you know, I'd say the biggest thing out there, you know, you got your clicks out there, mm -hmm. definitely. And you know, you heard Lanto talking the other day how a lot of people, you know, they don't even look at him or talk to him. Or I'm like, which seems strange to me. Um, everyone out there has been really cool to the old club pro, which is, which is nice. Um, but yeah, I don't have any like dirt. Uh, no, I don't, I don't, I don't have any dirt on anybody. I wish I yeah. did, but I don't. <laughs> is there anything playing at the, like, uh, in majors or like in the PGA tour events or anything that you didn't expect that you noticed playing out there that shocked you? That was like, oh, I didn't, I didn't know this was going to happen. Was the course harder, easier? Was that Yeah, like yeah, for sure. The 2018, 2018 U.S. Open at, at Shinnecock. Oof. So, I, you know, you qualify, you're playing these practice rounds, and it was like the most legit track, best one of the best courses I ever played in my life, hands down, during all the practice rounds. And you're throwing out cups to where you think they might be, like all the pin placements and stuff like that. And then on the first hole, I hit it down the fairway, hit it in the middle of the green, and I walk up on the green, and, and I'm like, where's the pin? I mean, I look back on the back right, and I'm going, that's the pin. I mean, dude, this thing was, 
it would it would literally be like putting a pin right here on this little corner, and the whole back side's a runoff down 40 yards away. Oh my god! And it's god. in this little spot, and I'm I'm going like this. So, like if this was, it was a pin location here, I would when I was throwing these cups out, wouldn't have been within 10 feet of this spot. And when I yeah. saw that, I'm like, I'm dead. That's and evil. <laughs> yeah, I was dead. I mean, the pin locations were, are unbelievable. And then, and then all of a sudden, the greens are ridiculous at Shinnecock with, when yep. they get really firm and fast. So the golf course in one day went from an unbelievably great track on Wednesday to Thursday just stupid. Because I played it on Thursday at 3 p.m. I'm the last group out. Oh, so it's like been Qualifier getting, yeah. tea time, 3 p.m. I was toast. I was watching TV before. Mike Tirico goes, God, I hope there's no... Uh, pros watching this right now because it's an absolute catastrophe out here today and this was in the morning right <laughs> and uh, I went out there and I think I shot 83 or Ooh. something like that and yeah that was fun and I really enjoyed doing that <laughs> <laughs> how yeah. much harder do you think the like standard pro course is than what most oh, amateurs that's play that's where like I get it all the strokes? time like you know I, sh I shot 73 at a Torrey Pine South course dude in February or January it's raining it's cold the ball doesn't fly it doesn't roll and you see something they're like Blackie what's wrong and people say that to me when I come back. I'm like, what's wrong? Have you ever played Torrey Pine South? That 73 was like shooting a 63 here at Arroyo. Yeah. You know, that's how hard that golf course that's is. And what you're talking about, the setups are yeah. night and day, the length. You know, if you're a plus, let's just say this on, on in general. If you're a scratch golfer and you go play a tour event setup, your handicap would immediately be a what, 10? 5 to 7. Okay. Immediately, five to seven shots harder yeah. than whatever you play easily. So you're probably not breaking eighty if you're a five to seven handicap oh, playing those courses. No, no chance. Yeah. No wow. Chance. Did you play or have a chance to play the PGA at uh, Kiwa? No, I missed that. That thing mm -hmm. looked so sick, though. It looked good. A lot of my guys did. The PGA professionals did down there, and they did well, which is cool. Wow. Nice. He played it. Would you shoot, Griff? I think I my goal. I played from the very back edge of the very tips, which they didn't even use in the PGA for some of those boxes. And yep. it was eighty two twenty seven, and my I think I shot eighty nine, and that was like I worked hard for that, <laughs> so hard for that eighty nine. <laughs> that's actually respectable, Griff. Yeah, that's how I long was that putt for uh, break ninety? <laughs> yeah, luckily. Um, it was like a Tap I it. had a twelve footer and uh, two putted it. That's so good. That's good. I was. It was a pretty simple 90. Yeah. I love that. Well, uh, I think we can keep this podcast pretty short and sweet because we're, we're going to go play some golf today. Yeah, I'm kind of antsy right what? now. Yeah, well, let's go eat some lunch and play some golf. Well, thanks, brother. Yeah. Appreciate it. Um, so I just want to leave with, like, what is kind of your – I know, obviously, you've, like, all of a sudden have this big social media following. And, um, you know, what, what do you, you want to try to keep that going in the next couple of years? Or is it just kind of like you're along for the ride? Or do you have any goals for that aspect of it as well? I'm kind of seeing just where everything goes, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Got some cool things coming out. Um, I think I've got a couple of pretty sweet episodes on Full Swing here at the beginning of the year. Oh, oh. sweet. Um, so we're gonna That's sick. Some, and people, <laughs> you, number one, you don't get paid for Full Swing. So just when of people course. ask you that yeah. thing. And yeah. then number two, you have no idea what's coming. Yeah, right? No idea. So when you guys are sitting there watching it for the first time, I'll be sitting there watching it for the first yeah. time, super nervous, going, oh, my gosh, what did they get? Yeah, I might know? be on it, and it's going to be the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> so we're like, oh, God. Yeah. You never know. I wasn't yeah. there, so I won't be on it. <laughs> yeah, I hope we're not, dude. We're not <laughs> funny at all. The it's scene like that they filmed of us, I really hope that's not. Where was it? Where was this? It was look. during the U.S. Open week. There was, like, a caddy party, um, and uh, it was, like, uh, Joel Damon's caddy, yeah. and, and we were just like they Gino. were doing like chippo, and we were just doing back offs with them, but like and they weren't funny jokes. Yeah, they were so bad. They, we just looked <laughs> like douchebags. Yeah. So I'm like really hoping they don't put that in. There. Yeah. The camera guy's <laughs> like, hey, go do this, and we're like, I don't think they want us to do this. Yeah. Explain the back off thing for me here, real quick, before we go play. Yeah. So uh, basically, it was, it was just like us just messing around on the golf course, and it was two years ago or so. Mm -hmm. We were in Colorado, and Griff was wearing some dumb outfit. And Mark just said to him, you look like you slept at your aunt's house last night, which doesn't really make sense, but it was, like, just vague enough to get him I to went, back wait, off his what? shot. So I had to back away. I was like, I can't hit the shot yet. Because we're all stand-up comedians, so it's our background to just, like, roast and crack mm -hmm. jokes. Yep. So we yeah. just kind of brought that to the golf course. Yep. And, and then, more. you know, like, I, I kind of came from the background of doing, like, 30-day challenges. Um, a year before that, I did this thing where I hit a golf ball in every state in America. Almost got arrested. Almost got arrested in Yellowstone. Wow. Um and I did that like, as a 30-day challenge. So I knew, like, at the time, everything was blowing up, like, on TikTok or whatever. So uh, if we were like, oh, let's try to do this for 30 days and see what happens. And then the first one got, like, a couple million views, and then yeah. it just kept escalating That's from there. Good. And now and now we have to yell at people for the rest of our lives. Yeah. That's <laughs> and then it led to I, us. I look, I look forward to it. It's going to be fun. 
Roasting Donald Trump. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it did. It did lead. It's led us to some interesting <laughs> places life. that you never would have expected. And you know, here we are, and uh, we get to enjoy this day with you. And now yeah. we're gonna break down the Block family. <laughs> Please do. Yeah. Block by block. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, we're gonna cause uh, some money in therapy bills for Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> <We're gonna laughs> like, Jeez, <laughs> I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks guys for tuning in. We love you so much. Shout out to Mr. Michael Block. You can follow him everywhere at. Blocky golf, Blocky waste golf. management. Any chance you play in that? <laughs> Come on, waste management. Get Blocky in. I Come think they, I think they'd kind of. Oh, I think anyone the people who's would ever love made it. for the waste Are management. Are you kidding me? We're gonna be there. We're gonna be there, and so we're gonna. We're, if nothing else, you're gonna come hang with us. February 6th, stand up show at Desert Ridge Improv uh, during Waste Management Week in Scottsdale. Let's come go. On. Bye. <laughs>